Hey everyone, and welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. If you've ever needed to send your users an invoice for any goods or services, uh, well, you're in luck. We'll show you how to do that with the Firebase Stripe invoice extension. If you enjoy this video and get some value out of it, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. We would definitely appreciate it, but without any further ado, let's jump into it. So like we said at the beginning of this video, the Firebase Stripe invoice extension is great if you need to send your clients or users of your application any invoices to their email. This is a really easy way to set that up. So basically how this extension works in Firebase is the extension watches a specific collection for document rights. And this, these document rights will contain information about the invoice that you're, you're writing to your database. And when it receives these new documents, it will send that information from the document about the invoice over to your Stripe account. And once Stripe receives this information, it'll generate an invoice and email it to the customer whose email matches the information on your Firestore document. The email will also contain any company brand info, logos, color schemes that you included in your Stripe account, as well as all the pricing information for the product you're invoicing them for. Then when the customer receives the invoice email, they'll be able to click a link, open a browser page, and pay their invoice through Stripe, and that money will then be deposited into your Stripe account. So to get started, we're going to navigate to the Firebase extension page, and we're just gonna scroll down until we see the invoice extension right here, send invoices using Stripe. So first we're gonna click see details and walk through some of the information involved with this extension. And these details include some of the things we've already talked about in this video so far about how you can use this Stripe extension and what you can do with it. If we keep scrolling, uh, it gives some uh, example data that you can enter into Firestore that we'll end up using a little later in this video. Uh, we see a screenshot here of what an invoice will look like. Um, and then just some additional steps for actually setting up this Stripe extension. And it goes into the billing a little bit. Um, Similar to some of the other Firebase extensions, there's like a minimum of a one cent fee to actually start using this extension. Um, so you need to be on the Firebase Blaze plan in order to use this extension. Um, and then there's just some additional notes. And now we get into the actual install. Um, what, well, you go ahead and use the console, but you can also use the Firebase CLI to do this. So now we're going to install the extension in our Firebase project by clicking the install and console button. And it's going to ask us which project we want to install it on and we're going to install it on our main project here. And so now we're going to set up some configuration details for the extension specific to this Firebase project. The first step here is just letting you know that a couple of cloud functions are going to be installed, one being send invoice and the other being update invoice, and those are pretty self-explanatory as to what they do. Um, so we'll go ahead and click next. The next step is for reviewing the billing and usage. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a minimum of one cent per month fee, so you must be on the Blaze plan in order to use this extension. Um, and it also is letting you know that it's making third-party API requests to Stripe. So next up are the service accounts that are going to be created in your Firebase project and in your overall Google Cloud Platform project, which is just hosting your Firebase project. And so you can see here, we've got two service accounts being created. If you do need to dig into these a little bit and reconfigure them over time, you'll need to go to your Google Cloud Platform and find this Firebase project in there and you can mess with them in the IAM settings uh, of that Google Cloud project. So we're just gonna hit next because we're okay with this. And lastly, we have the actual configuration of where we want the uh, functions, the Firebase functions to be writing to in our database, to be reading from, as well as some default information about the invoices themselves. In the configuration here, you can see the first option is to select a Cloud Function deployment location, and you can typically just leave this as the default, whatever it comes up with you and pre-populates for you. The second input field here is the location of the collection that we're going to be writing to Firestore to store our invoices. 
And we're just going to go ahead and leave that as invoices and it will be at the root of our Firestore database. The third input field here is for our Stripe API key and we're going to go to uh, Stripe and actually grab this API key after we kind of explain the rest of these input fields here. The next one is just the days until payment is due um, so you can give several days and for your customers to actually pay the invoice um, by default it's set to seven but you can change that to whatever you'd like and we're just going to leave it as seven it's also important to note here that you could also override this value um, on a per invoice basis so if you want to specifically send an invoice out that is fewer days or more days um, you could do that as well and then the last input field here is our stripe webhook secret and this input field will actually populate or update after we install the extension. Um, so yeah, we'll show you how to do that. But for now, we're going to hop over to Stripe and actually grab our Stripe API key. Before we head over to Stripe, we need to double check what restricted access this Stripe API key needs to have. And if you open up the description field, you can see here that it says we need write access for customers and invoices resources. So now let's head over to Stripe and we'll get those access keys. So here we are in our Stripe dashboard. We've just logged in and this is the main screen. Uh, you can see we do not have test data turned on. That's because for this extension, Stripe will not send an email for invoices if you're using test API keys. So normally you would wanna use this, especially if you're gonna be testing invoices so that no real money goes through. But to demonstrate the email capabilities, we are going to be using our live API keys. So to create a restricted access API key, we're going to click on the developers tab, click on the API keys, and then we're going to create a new restricted key in the bottom right. So we're just going to give this key a name uh, that matches the Firebase extension name, which is just Stripe invoice Firebase extension. And then we're just going to allow write access for the customers and invoices data uh, resources. So you can see customers right here. We're just going to click write and then we're going to scroll down to invoices and we're going to click write as well. And that's it. So now we just need to hit create key and you do need to copy this key and make sure you copy it somewhere safe because once you hide it, you cannot see it again. So we're just going to copy it and then paste it back in that extension setup that we were just on in Firebase. So back in the Firebase extension configuration, we've pasted it in here for the Stripe API key with restricted access. And after that, we can actually hit install extension because we're not gonna set up this webhook until after the extension has been installed in our Firebase project. Now that our extension is installed, we're gonna go ahead and click this get started button to uh, start demoing um, the, the extension that we have working so far. So in the instructions here, um, you can see that it tells you how to test out the extension. Um, we're going to be entering some data into uh, our Firestore collection that we created. Uh, as a document for our invoice and we're going to see that trigger um, well the the stripe invoice api here um, and then we're actually going to get an email in our email with our invoice um, so let's go over to firestore and start entering in some data the first thing we need to do is actually create our invoices uh, collection because we haven't actually run the code yet so it hasn't created it automatically so we're just going to go ahead and manually create this collection We'll just call it invoices. Uh, that's what we named it in our configuration when setting up the extension. We're gonna go ahead and click next and we're gonna go ahead and generate a document ID. Now we're gonna start filling out some information for our invoice here in the document. So we filled out the data for our invoice. The first field here is a email. So this uh, the extension will actually send an email to this email address with the invoice. Uh, the second field here is an items array of all the items that you want to invoice for. Um, we're just doing one item here, and this is the price in a non-decimalized uh, fashion. Uh, so since we're using US dollars here, this will be uh, $34.47. 
Um, so that's why it's 3,447. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, the currency, we're using US dollars and Stripe does support a lot of different currencies, um, not just US dollars. Uh, there is a quantity field that you can add here. Um, we don't have it, and if you don't have it, it will default to a quantity of one, but we could add a field if we're selling like two of whatever item this is. Um, that's, that's how you do that. And then there's a description. Uh, we have like the most baller software system ever as our description, because that's what it is. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and click save to actually save this document. So now if we jump into Stripe, we should see that invoice created. So in your Stripe dashboard to get to invoices, you're going to click on customers on the left and then invoices underneath that. And you should see your invoice that you just created in your Firebase console. And you can actually see if the email was sent from Stripe to this email if we open up the invoice. And at the top here, you can see the series of events for this specific invoice. So you can see that the invoice was finalized and then an email was sent to this email address. So let's go check our email. So we went to our Gmail and as you can see, we now have an invoice uh, from Small Batch Devs um, for the item that we just purchased or received an invoice for um, through Firebase and through the Stripe extension. And to actually pay this invoice, all you have to do is just click on the button here that says pay this invoice, and it'll open up a new tab with the Stripe invoice dashboard. Um, so you can go ahead and enter bank information or card information to actually pay this invoice. So the next step is to set up our webhook, and the webhook is basically going to set up a connection so that Stripe can talk back to our Firestore location whenever an invoice is updated inside Stripe. So if we had just paid that invoice that you just saw, Stripe's database would have the invoice updated as paid, but our Firestore database would not have that information. And so this webhook will allow Stripe to tell our Firestore database that the invoice was paid or that it's overdue or some other status update. So to get started, we're going to scroll down in the documentation and copy this webhook URL and this will be specific to your project's webhook that this extension created. And you can just copy this and go back to the Stripe dashboard. So to make the webhook in uh, Stripe here, all you have to do is go to developers and then webhooks, and we're gonna go ahead and add an endpoint. In this page, we're going to paste in our endpoint URL that we copied from the documentation in the previous step. We can go ahead and add a description you can set a version here. Um, we're just going to leave it as our current version, and then we're going to select some events to send. And in this step, we need to actually select all of the invoice events. Um, so if we go ahead and click the just the plain invoice, uh, this will actually select all 13 events for us. And then we'll go ahead and add the endpoint. The next step here is to actually copy the signing secret because we're going to actually update our Firebase uh, Stripe invoice extension, as we mentioned earlier, with this uh, this secret key. So if we click click reveal, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Don't try to use this because we're just going to delete this anyways. Um, and we're going to go back into Firebase and update our extension configuration. So we're now back in our Firebase extension configuration, and uh, we can hit reconfigure extension at the top of this extension screen and go ahead and paste in that signing secret for our webhook. Now once you do this, you can hit save and you will need to keep this page open until that bar fills up and the configuration has been saved. If you don't, uh, I think it'll still update in the background, but it's kind of iffy on when it's done. Uh, so just stay on this page until it's done. And while we're here, just as a disclaimer, you obviously don't want to share your Stripe API key and your webhook URL with anyone that doesn't need to know it. Um, so just keep those a secret. So one of the last things you'll need to do and that we'll talk about in this tutorial is update your Firestore security rules. You obviously, if you are allowing your users to read their invoices directly from Firestore, you don't want people to be able to read each other's invoices and when they're writing to Firestore to actually send this invoice, 
You may not want even the users to be able to write directly to Firestore. You may want to set up a separate cloud function so that you can validate the data coming in through the invoice um, before uh, it's actually being sent over to Stripe. So we're going to go ahead and hop over to uh, our security rules just to take a quick peek um, at what you can possibly do there. So we're in our security rules for Firestore and we added this additional match security rule for our invoices. So it's going to look at our invoices collection and then any ooh, any uh, invoice that is added under that collection, any document that's added under that collection. And you can see here, as I mentioned, we're allowing write if false. And here's where you'll want to set up um, a specific cloud function so that only the cloud function can write to uh, this location in the invoices collection. So it can only, only write those documents. Um, so you're not letting just users, I mean, you could let users do it, but uh, never trust your users, really. Um, they might spam and send a bunch of invoices or send really high priced invoices. So um, here's where you can kind of tailor that down a little bit. Um, and then as we mentioned, allow read if our request that's coming in, the email on that request um, only matches the email on that specific invoice UID. Um, so that's basically what's happening here so that you can only read your own invoices can't read other people's invoices as well. And because we're using request.off.token.email, this obviously implies that your email, that your user is signed in with an email or has an email attached to their account before they can actually read, um, read these invoices. So lastly, we just wanted to mention that if you did decide to use this invoice functionality uh, in your client application where the client could write to this invoice location. Um, just to be careful with that, you know, you can, like Austin said, get spammed. Um, it, you really have to set up some really structured rules around when invoices can be written from the client. But if you did want to set that up, you would use code similar to what's on the screen. Now this code is specific to running in a cloud function because it's using the admin library of Firebase. Uh, so the code I've highlighted is not going to be used in your client app, but the rest of it where you're just writing to the invoices collection could be used on the client side. So thank you so much for watching. That's going to wrap up our overview of the Firebase Stripe invoice extension. We hope you learned a lot. Uh, please let us know how you use this extension and what kind of invoices you're sending for services or products. In the comments, obviously. In the comments, obviously. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and maybe hit that notification bell so you get notified when we upload more web development-ish videos. Also, if you don't mind, check out our uh, Small Batch Devs podcast. It's on all your main podcasting platforms. We'll leave some links down below. We just kind of talk about tech stuff and drink a little bit of whiskey along with that. Um, it's a great time. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you very soon. Peace.